Um, fellas? Uh, hello? Hello? I'm trying to uh, do my shot. You guys are kind of in the, uh, you, you know what? You know what? I'll, 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 I'll just, I'll, I'll just do it around you. This, this is Jay Todd, and, and here's what's happening. This week in gambling. This Week in Gambling has been made possible by On Tilt Radio, the number one ranked poker radio website and the only true poker radio social network with more original programming and syndicated content than anyone. Visit ontiltradio.com. Hello, friends, and welcome to This Week in Gambling. I'm your host, Jay Todd, hoping you all had a fun, safe, happy Halloween. We have a lot of gambling news to get to this week, starting with major developments in online gambling in the United States. In the second half of our show, an interview that's going to tie all this together really nice. You'll see. But first, this week's big story. MGM Resorts has announced that they expect to have their online gambling license as early as this week. And more importantly, they've revealed that states are now in talks with one another on how to form alliances to make online gambling a viable market. Now, this whole states alliances thing would seem to be setting up a collision between the states that want online gambling and the federal government. Leading the charge, of course, you have Nevada, New Jersey, and Delaware. We're going to have more on this very important story in just a moment, including details on another very powerful group entering online gambling in North America this month. But first, my friends, if you're heading to Las Vegas anytime soon, here's a look at what you can expect to see. Hey, everybody, that time of the month again, Jay Todd at Fremont Street, talking with my buddy Tom about what they've got going on in the month of November. During the last week of November is NASCAR Champions Week here in Las Vegas, and as part of that celebration on uh, Wednesday, November 28th in the afternoon, we'll have the top 12 drivers, the drivers who competed in the chase, down here for thousands of NASCAR fans to come and meet their favorite drivers, and uh, that is really a fun event. Uh, we're here in front of the D, and let me mention that there's a lot of renovation going on on Fremont Street. Uh, the former Fitzgeralds has new owners and has rebranded the property, uh, the D. Uh, Golden Gate has done a lot of remodeling, and Golden Nugget has uh, remodeled and expanded. They recently built a 600-room additional tower called the Rush Tower that uh, competes with any room product on the Strip. So a lot of growth and uh, synergy here downtown. So you just mentioned that so that they'll comp you a VIP suite, right? <laughs> no, I, I would never ask that. I would? What are you talking about? Come on, give me a VIP suite. Golden Gate, Golden Gate, Golden Nugget. There you go. Maybe they'll look me up. Thank you, Tom. That's what's, that's what's going on in, uh, at Fremont Street in the month of November. Follow, comment, and repin our gambling articles and videos. Visit Pinterest.com slash twig pins she's walking out the door and it leads me to believe what's up you just out here tearing it up in vegas I'm trying i'm doing my best i'm from chicago chicago yes, sir. are you how many you had tonight my friend no you see i'm carrying a bag for the next round is this your buddy this back here, right here. Hey, man, all right chicago. Really, we represented chicago the chicago all right, man. What's your name? I'm Jay Todd. You're going to be on a show called This Week in Gambling. This Week in Gambling. All right, I'm yeah. out. All right. Who are you? Arturo, man. Art. Art. All right, all right you guys. Chicago. Go Bears. Go Bears. All right. Before we get into the second half of our program, I wanted to send out a big congratulations to Greg Merson 
the 24-year-old who just won the World Series of Poker and pocketed more money than I'll ever see in my lifetime, $8.5 million. Good for you, man. You want to stake me in a game? All right. In the first half of our show, I was telling you about MGM's move toward online gambling and how exciting that is for players. But if you can't get excited about that news, check this out. Native American casinos in the United States have announced they plan to have real online gambling live this month and that doing this is going to unify tribal communities, meaning that they can play from one tribal land to another. And if those different tribal lands happen to be in different states, they say they have the right to do this as sovereign nations to compete with states and big Vegas gaming companies. And I tend to agree with them. If they're able to pull it off, they will become the biggest gaming force in the world. Hello everyone, Jay Todd here. I've caught up with Leslie Loesch of the California Tribal Business Alliance. Indian Affairs and the United States is when it comes to tribal gaming have always fascinated me because I don't think they get enough press coverage. It's a complicated issue, when, especially when it comes to internet gaming, uh, state by state. These are sovereign nations that have rights to gaming and the media doesn't cover a, a lot of what is, is important to them. And you talk about uh, what happens with the government on Capitol Hill and they're not talking a lot about the considerations with tribal gaming. And they're going to have to because because the laws are such that these are our sovereign nations we're talking about. Ms. Loesch, thank you so much for joining me. Would you, what's the most important thing out there that players watching might not know or understand when it comes to internet gambling and tribal relations? I think the um, key matter that they need to consider is the history and the government to government relationship that we actually had with the federal government. Um, many people think that it's um, just we're a special interest group set aside with some um, rights that n no one else gets to have for some odd reason. But unfortunately, um, you know, history, if it was studied properly and, and look at the documents that um, recognize, not give us, but recognize us as sovereign tribal nations, um, I think they would start to look at it from a different premise and perhaps then understand why legislators need to consider um, um, any legislation that impacts our ability to do gaming. Um, there's the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act. We do have compacts, all of those things. And so it is incumbent upon them to consider that. And we would like others to read and understand and see that we're not just a, a an offshoot group of uh, minorities out there, Correct. but that we ha we are sovereign nations that were recognized mm -hmm. and and um, not given again, not given our sovereignty, but recognized. Exactly. You know, especially in California, it's complicated because I know that state law there gives the, the tribal gaming in rights, uh, or the tribal gaming interest, all rights to electronic gaming in the state. Uh, this creates an interesting problem with internet gambling because in the past, say a game of craps played with dice or roulette played on a wheel, it can now be played electronically over the internet. Does this cause sort of a difficult situation and how murky is this? Oh, absolutely. It causes a, a lot of um, um, ill feelings, so to speak, <laughs> because um, the problem is is that we have compacts, as you said, and it's under the, the California Constitution that tribal um, uh, governments are the ones that can do the electronic gaming. And so when the state is considering um, expanding electronic gaming into areas that might um, be a breach to our compact, um, you know, that, that could cause a lot of um, consternation and ill feelings and, and, you know, and some lawsuits perhaps because at this point, until we really define what they're going to put out there, does it impact or breach our compacts as California constitutional law states it? Um, there might be a loss to the state of over 365 million because the tribes are not going to continue to pay for something that they no longer have the exclusivity as our compacts um, state clearly.
All right, and California is not really in a position to be giving away money right now. So it's a very complicated issue. There's a lot at stake here. Where can people go if they'd like more information or to contact you guys to, to learn about this more? Oh, thank you for asking that. Um, it's uh, www.caltba.org, and we have a lot of our, our press releases, our guiding principles that we would like to see that are incorporated into any legislation, and you'll learn a little bit more about what we do with our tribal gaming revenues. So All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Loesch. I, I appreciate you coming on for us. You know, I was, uh, I was looking. You guys look legit. I mean, obviously, you're like Venom and, and you're Spider-Man. But, I mean, this is a legit costume. You know, I thought this was like, you know, padding and stuff. No, you're the real deal, man. You, you, you are the real deal. Those are all, that's all real muscle and stuff. I mean, that, the, and, and the thing that makes it even more impressive uh, is, is turn around, show them here. Like a bear back and a fanny pack. That's, that, that's the Spidey pack. Please pay at the window.